Let's begin the conversation. And I've been joined in studio by Dr. Michael Pesahua, the former director of the National Service Scheme. And we'll be joined later by Richard Nyama, who is also the uh, deputy communications director of the N. PP. Doc, welcome. Good morning. Thank morning. you very much Thank for your you, time. Thank you. Yes, Sunday, <clears throat> there was a heavy rain. Um, we're told that five persons have lost their lives so far. In just about a week, we've lost about what, 11 souls already. Now, the Ministry of Sanitation is indicating that we've gotten 190, uh, 97 million to contain the floods. I heard the very first time when uh, lawyer Tachia was being uh, made the uh, sector minister for uh, works and housing that one of his mandates was to uh, see how we could bring an end to the annual flooding that we have. Subsequently, <coughs> we're promised some 200 million by the president and the state of nation address to uh, solve the problems of sanitation, which will be an after effect of the floods or a contributing factor of it. Now we're told that we have the 197 million to contain the floods. Uh, these monies and these plans and these intentions, will they ever materialize? Well, thank you very much and good morning to our viewers. Um, I think that it is uh, very unfortunate and uh, my deepest condolences to the families that have unfortunately lost their loved ones um, in these recent floods. This is not the very first time. Mm. Um, as a country, we have witnessed this and we continue to witness this. And I think that uh, it is fair to also say that as a country, we have come so far that we could anticipate when floods will come and when floods um, may not come. And again, as a country, I want to believe that we um, also know the various areas and settlements where when floods come or when the rains pour and the floods emerge, right. lives of our citizens are endangered. And so that presupposes that with that kind of historical and empirical data, we will be significantly prepared to contain uh, any flood and ensure that our citizens are safe wherever they are. It does appear to me that we continue to wallow in lip services. Um, we all know that the floods, of course, the rains are natural occurrences, right. but we know that the floods by themselves are also human, um, are, are informed by human attitudes in, to the extent that drains and other facilities that have been constructed or are expected to be constructed to ensure that um, water gets free passage have either been choked by our own indiscriminate disposal of waste mm or by government's neglect and negligence of um, giving priority attention to, to some of these areas. So throwing money or, or, I mean, announcing funds that have been allocated only when people's lives are lost, in my mind, is basically um, trying to quench fire rather, without, rather than uh, solving the problem, going to the root of the problem. I would have wished that uh, following Honorable Atachian's comments when right. he was being vetted, that by now, because he's been in office for two and uh, perhaps half years now, right. by now we would have seen uh, palpable evidence that a lot of work has been done, um, particularly around the Odor, Odor River and other areas that feed into the, into the flooding situation in this country. Unfortunately, it appears to me that uh, we have not been able to contain the situation as successfully as we can as a nation. I think that is very worrying. Mm -hmm. um, we have seen this happen, and it continues to happen. And I think that um, nobody is safe. I mean, in the recent one, we, we have it reported in the press that um, a military officer and the, and the spouse also were caught up in the, in the flood. That that's really tells you that um, nobody is, is, is safe. And I think in, the, in one of the previous ones, there was a situation where I think a medical doctor also right, right. got caught up in the same situation. So as a nation, we must give these things a, a priority. Mm. Uh, announcing funds only when the event has occurred, in my view, is really not going to solve the problem. There must be practical action on the ground. This is one of the things where when work is ongoing, everybody will see. Mm. and. Uh, Floods do not know who is NDC and who is MPP. Right. Um, floods are just water that are water that is uh, looking for passage, and so as a matter of priority, um, the government must 
go beyond um, telling us about 197 million CDs that have been released or 200 million CDs that have been promised by the president previously and take real, demonstrate real concrete action mm. to ensure that, I mean, people live safe life when, uh, whenever it rains. Richard, welcome. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Richard Nyama is a Deputy Director of Communications of the MPP. Richard, welcome. You look, you look sharp. Thank you. The, and, uh, the good morning right. to your viewers and uh, our very good friend, Dr. Mm. Pesa White. Right. Good morning. The, the very well. yes. perennial flooding, Richard, that's what we're talking about. Why don't we have a national plan up until this time? And we keep doing the residual solutions to try and fix a problem that is an annual gain. Um, my brother, this, this subject is, is an embarrassment on us as a nation. Seriously, it should be a blot on our conscience. You can predict. You don't have to be a prophet. You just need to be seen to predict a range of people dying in the rainy season in Accra every year, year mm -hmm. on year. Uh, I remember when the 20... Uh, 14, 2015, 15 June, June, 3. June, June 3 disaster happened. Uh, someone actually abroad put a bet on us and won, I think, uh, some 20,000 US dollars. Okay. That it will happen again. That is how predictable we are when it comes to be inactive. Mm. Unfortunately, we are a nation of talkers. We glorify people who can talk and wrap their way through issues. Mm. But when it comes to delivering action, we don't seem to care, even as a people. Mm. No matter how much we cry about these subjects or these issues, uh, give it a week who leave that behind and then grab another issue mm. and leave that behind. It's, it's symptomatic of the fact that we do not have structures and systems working. Mm. And we rely on human beings and personalities to come and work some magic. And it's not going to happen today, it won't happen tomorrow. If we do not deal with the structures that are obviously non-existent. There is an engineering problem. Mm. The whole of Greater Accra has a problem, engineering-wise. That aside, we have a problem as a people as well. Our habits, our attitudes, mm. attitudinal problems. I remember uh, former Vice President Ali, right. when he took this as a major issue to be addressed, mm. we virtually poo pooed it. We ended up laughing at the attempt and the adverts and all that. And we did not address our minds to it as a people. That look, for, and I don't, unless Doc knows, I haven't seen any country in the world. Mm that is functionally developed, that is uh, uh, developmentally up there, right. that has its laws not working. That is the fundamental uh, 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 base of every developed country, right. that they have laws and those laws work. Why, do, why doesn't ours work? Oh, yes, because <laughs> I said the systems and the structures don't work if they that is even if they exist okay the people who are supposed to be making sure they should work are the ones who are actually leading uh, 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 corporates when it comes to disobeying the law and uh, putting it aside you and i when somebody gets caught uh, we'll call the police we'll call the politician mm. to get them out the most abhorrent aspect is that you have calls. you have you have pastors and uh, imams and uh, chiefs making calls, mm -hmm. and somehow they will find a verse in the Bible that lets you do that. 
<laughs> to disobey or overrule the law. Until we are prepared as a people to address our minds to these basic things. You and I have a responsibility. The flood that happens and causes, last week it was five deaths. Right. This week is another five. You can predict a couple will die, a doctor will die, an engineer will die, virtually in a car. At the same spot, year on, year on. What is happening? But I think as a nation, we need to address our minds to something. Uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, a week ago, I mentioned somewhere. If we cannot address the engineering problem in Accra, mm. because it will be too expensive and too costly to deal with, I suggest we do what the Nigerians did. What, what have they done? Lagos used to be the capital of Nigeria. They took a while. They identified a new place they wanted to build as the new capital. So you go to Abuja, it is properly structured. Mm. Let's give ourselves 10 years, 20 years. Let's demarcate a place. Have the engineering, the drawing properly done, sewage system, everything properly done. Mm -hmm. And if we have to take that bold step, let's do it. It, but, it was uh, done for Tema. Uh, Tema sadly has joined the flooding flea as well. Tema it's was planned as an industrial city. Today, uh, it has lost its uh, industries. I can tell you 90% of the people living in Tema are no more industrial workers. But that used to be the case right. when the, the city was planned. It's now a township that everyone moves in and builds. Mm -hmm. even our, do we even have a building code here? Other places, you just don't get up and start structuring a, a, and building. There are laws. Nothing works. I'm sad, but uh, look, it's po very possible next week or a couple of weeks' time we'll be here talking about 10 more dead. Nothing is going to be done about it. The, the district assembly bosses or the MCs have been made uh, the, the bosses of the disaster management committees in their district. Why isn't that changing anything? No, but Yesterday you, they were in parliament. No, but look at it. If you are the district boss, and yours is to manage disaster. Disaster happens, whatever you are going to do is an afterthought. It's when the event has happened, the person has died. He has been carried away. What are you going to change? What are you going to change? We should be thinking about preventing it, mm. not managing the problem when it has happened. In, 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 predicting, uh, in, in uh, preventing it, last year, I remember the president mentioned that we're going to get some 200 million cities allocation to fix our sanitation problems, which will forestall some of these problems. This year, we're hearing of 197. The 200 million from last year, we didn't see it. Now we're talking 197. And I don't know. What I know is me. the 197 is actually part of the 200 million. It was passed somewhere the last quarter of right. uh, uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. So naturally, that it will overflow over, into overflows this. Okay. into this year. I know, uh, at least yesterday, I saw a few uh, TV news uh, casts mm -hmm. showing people or contractors aside working, okay, and desulting and doing all those things. But I'm saying mm -hmm. that these are things we have been doing over the years that have given us no results. Somebody needs to take a bold step. Who is that somebody? If it is going to cost us a, a, a 10 billion trying to fix the, uh, the, 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 the engineering problem of Accra. Right. If I had the will, if I had the opportunity, I'll relocate Ghana's capital. Solve this problem because naturally there will be a movement out of this place. Okay. That will let the, 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 the density and the pressure that is on Accra reduce. The new focus will be the new place. And seriously, if you announced some landmark today and had the drawings done, how you want it to look, if you cannot fit into that structure, that building, you don't go in there, you'll be surprised. Have we'll you, give ourselves 10 years. It will end up happening in five years. Have you made the suggestion need to, to be, your government? We need to, you see, unfortunately, we as a people have a way of holding our governments to ransom. So at the end of the day, every government is afraid of the political consequences they will have to pay when they take such a drastic decision. 
you ask yourself, if we took this decision today, what would be the effect on the political fortune of the governing MPP? Mm. The likelihood is that the owners and the uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, um, indigents of Greater Accra would probably vote en masse against you, would probably not be uh, enthused about it, and so you are likely to lose your election. Right. But question is, if you did that, would the other side take advantage? Or would they say, look, this is politically correct a decision, so let us also stay on and say that, yes, once this decision has been taken, we'll abide by it if we can. Then everyone knows that, look, whichever way the pendulum swings, I'm not safe. It's the decision is taken, and we're going to go by it. Then we'll begin to move as a people and as a nation. So trust me, I may say this, but I also want my party to be in power to cause the change and the development and the difference that we expect. Mm -hmm. We'll probably need a round table so, sort of sitting to agree that, look, this decision needs to be taken. Let's both agree that when we announce it, we'll agree and so that uh, we both don't suffer the political consequences of it. <sighs> Doc, yes. yesterday, some judge was here. He, he, he has been in the, a tech before, and he said Kumasi is hilly. We tend to often focus on Accra, but Kumasi is hilly. And so even in Accra, when it rains, water is able to seep into the earth, mm. and the residue is what we get mm. as flood. But Kumasi is hilly, and it's a disaster waiting to happen. Mm. Then this morning, I read about the Bagri Dam. Of your, the rains are coming, so it will be spilled all over again. And so the, the holistic national plan, why don't we have it again? I'm asking that question. Why don't we have it? And what's keeping us from having it? Well, I think it's a question of why aren't we implementing? Because it, it's probably not entirely correct that we don't have holistic national the, plan. The, the, president, the president called on NADMO a few months ago to present his disaster management plan, his national disaster management plan. I'm yet to see the plan. Let, so let me, it presupposes that we, yeah, we don't let, have Let it. me make a few comments in relation to Richard's comment, and then I'll come back to right. your substantive Great. question. Uh, on a very light note, <laughs> I hope your party is not planning to relocate the capital to Kibi. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I think that I, I like Richard's uh, submissions this morning uh, because it is a complete departure from the usual... Um, approach where it's like my government is in power, so I need to kind of take an entrenched position. It spoke more like uh, somebody who is rising above uh, above party, but it's also very surprising uh, that that particular uh, I mean posturing is also very surprising because he is the deputy communication right. officer of the MPP, and so a very high profile personality mm -hmm. of the party, and and so one is left wondering as he's talking. One is left wondering. Why is it difficult for, I mean, people like Richie and many other people like him who may be in the MPP now, who have the mandate of Ghanaians, to push through the ideas that um, he's talking about? I mean, uh, these are good ideas for, for this country. Right. And um, you, have the, you hold the mandates. Now, when you talk about, we need to think about this, we need to think about this, we need to think about that. The mandate is in your hands. The thinking space has been handed over to you. So one would have expected that on a program like this, you would have been saying, we have done this, we are doing this, we have planned this, this is where stage we are, this is what we are doing. But when we, we go around the country and canvass for votes and we are duly elected, and then we return to the television stations and we begin to tell the people that um, we should be doing this instead of doing that, we're doing that, and the people's attitude laws are not working and everything, that leaves even the citizens a little bit confused, I mean, in all fairness. And I think that, um, we must accept a certain level of government responsibility, mm -hmm. just like how we required the government of the, of the NDC in the previous era to also accept responsibility. And the question is, to what extent has this government, the present government, given the issue of flooding priority, the issue of sanitation priority? My, my friend- There's a sanitation ministry, that's not enough. I mean, setting up a sanitation ministry does not really solve any problem. What has the sanitation ministry been doing since it, was a set, it was, since it was set up? Sanitation has, in every part of this world, 
been a crucial part of the local government administration. Where is garbage produced? Garbage is produced at the household. Which government institution is closer to the households? The local governments. And so to now have a Ministry of Local Government and then take out of the Ministry of Local Governments an aspect and say, I'm setting up a Ministry of Sanitation, you have just created a conflict of interest situation, a confusion and a looming disaster. That is what we are seeing as far as this sanitation problem is concerned. And so I worry when, it's, when we think that solving a problem is about creating a new institution. So we want to solve a corruption problem. Mm -hmm. So we created a special prosecutor. We want to, create a, we want to solve minist uh, what you call a sanitation problem. So we created a new ministry. These things don't solve any problem. The right thing is that ideas develop nations. We must focus on the centers that generate ideas okay. and ensure that those ideas, we breathe life into them. And when we breathe life into them, they create opportunities. And when they create opportunities, people tap into those opportunities and solve many problems. In other parts of the world today, they are importing garbage. Mm. They are importing garbage because they have successfully gone through a process of recycling to the extent that no garbage is garbage anymore. Garbage is now seen as a resource. Mm. In our part of the world, garbage has become a curse. We throw it anywhere indiscriminately. The are laws to enforce disposal. When we were kids, there were all these uh, summer, summer people who come to around to make sure that when you are, I mean, indiscriminately mm -hmm. disposing garbage, you are appropriately dealt with or you are taken to the courts to, to be dealt with. What has happened to that? We Less have waste management companies or don't they manage waste? If they were managing it effectively and efficiently, we would have, wouldn't have been talking about um, waste being part of the reasons why we are having flooding situations in this country. I think that we must return to the basics. How do we make sure that we arrest the production of garbage at the household level before it gets out of the household? Okay. Let's look at uh, page 33 of the... Uh, one minute. You, you, would have, you make a point. <laughs> but I, I want us to pay attention to some statistics in the uh, Daily Graphic, page 33. It talks about heavy rainfall in September to October 1999 which caused severe floods in Ghana, including Upper West, Upper East regions. An estimated number of 290,000 people were displaced, over 50 deaths were recorded, 31 houses collapsed, and 170 acres of farmlands were destroyed. Then we come to 2009. We had the same number of people displaced, 290,000, over 50 deaths were recorded, and the same number of houses, 31,000, were displaced, and the 117 farmlands were again and destroyed. Then August 27, uh, we had flooding in the northern region, estimated number of 350,000 people uh, causing damage valued at some 130 million US dollars. Over 156 communities up north were affected. The deaths as usual featured. August 2010, crops cultivated along the banks of the Volta, White Volta from Burkina Faso and the main were also destroyed. And you talk about Bugula, Tabre, those towns are, along those places were destroyed. Fast forward to 2013, we had severe floods leading to affected uh, four, 458 households in the East Mampusi. And then the deaths as well came in. Then in September 2014, as recent as that, we had about six fatalities in Kumbugu District, Northern Region, and that. 2017 was there, 2015 was there. The story doesn't change. So these fine ideas that you both have, and you both have been in government, why haven't you put it on paper to implement it to save the people, their livelihoods, their homes, to make them rest and sleep when they go to sleep? Why? Why must we be scared when it rains? That's a hypocrisy of the politics that we have. You look at it, it started 1990 what? 1999. 1999. 2010, 2014, majority of it is under them. If we take our dispensation as a country, politically, I think it is high time we spoke to the issues and agreed mm -hmm. that we both have failed. <clears throat> and that we should do something about it. <clears throat> Otherwise, we should change they, you. And, oh, okay. <laughs> I've only been here two years. You've been there eight years, and you haven't done anything about it. Yeah? Yet you have centers of ideas that did not develop into solutions. Okay? So it, 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 it at least uh, tampers uh, patience okay. that if I'm only here two years, I, should, I, I still have some six years to show proof up to your level mm -hmm. that I can do it and do it better. But look, the issues, 
what are they? You're talking about sanitation. Right. Yes. What causes these things to happen? Mm. We have open drainages. I, I don't, I just don't get it. Why you would build a road or construct a road and have some 10 uh, 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 inch, 20 inch at most uh, uh, drainage, mm. which cannot be covered, is there. It will cost us more in terms of uh, the flooding and the lives than how much it costs to construct the road. But the simple part of covering that up somehow is lost to us. They, they are not captured in the contracts that are awarded by so, yes. the political class. So why, why is that? These are the issues you sh we should be addressing. You have <clears throat> garbage bins all across. Okay, yet somebody drops a water sachet right in front of the garbage bin. Mm. They are sitting in a truck, they put it out of the window, and nothing happens. It's normal life. You here, you just live like you're in the jungle, excuse me, but laws don't apply. Mm. I'm saying it's a shared responsibility. Right. If civilians and the population would Go by the law. Yes, but you see, <laughs> naturally, if there is no sanction, if there is no uh, 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 reprimand okay. when you disobey the law, the natural instinct is for you to even disobey the law. Mm. So it comes back to structures and institutions working. When Obama said that when he came, he, he, he virtually summarized our developmental problem into one word. Lack of institutions. Okay. He came and gave us free advice, walked off, and we went to sleep. I'm saying that both NDC and MPP have failed. And we should all bow our heads in shame when it comes to this perennial flooding thing. Okay. I don't even think we should be giving us a space to speak on this matter. Tell us to go solve it before you come, we come let, on let, your Let's on take your, a final source. bite of this on, on the angle of the National Disaster Management Organization. There have been accusations that has become job for the boys and girls. So both of you come into power and, and you make NADMO uh, an avenue to employ people. And I say that in 2015, I was at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle. I saw supposed NADMO officials distributing gloves to people who had no training uh, in rescue mission to go and help them to rescue people. They couldn't swim to save their own lives. It took the Navy and the fire service to come swim and take the people out of the water. Should we stop politicizing that more, some have suggested, and make it part of, say, the fire service? So before you enter and become a NADMO official, you have had paramilitary training, you know how to swim, you know how to do mouth-to-mouth uh, 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 -mouth resuscitation and all those. Should, we, should we have that? List. Should we have, should well, we shouldn't we depoliticize everything in this country? Even what I would drink is NDC and PP. Shouldn't question shouldn't even come. No, it should come because we know what to do, but we are not doing it. That is, no, but that, so is, the, the, that is the argument we've been having and I've been raising, that look, as right. a people, we have reduced everything in this country to politics. But you are in government now. Would, yes. you take the, would you take the step to, to change it, to wipe up, like you want to say that the vigilantes or people who are known vigilantes are in our security services, want to uh, wipe them out, want to stamp out vigilantism. Can we start with not say, look, even the person who becomes the head of NADMO must have requisite well, knowledge and capacity he, he, he was, to I, it. I agree with you to 120% uh, that our state institutions should be professional institutions instead of political appendages, okay, of whichever government is in power. Mm. Okay. And so uh, to be a, an employee of NADMO, you should have some minimum uh, uh, requirement qualification wise okay mm -hmm. and you should at least be able to prove okay. that uh, you you have some you should have some first aid training you should be able to uh, 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 save <laughs> human life mm -hmm. 
in such distressful situations. Probably take them through fire service, uh, police, and military training because it's a, it's a, it's a mixture of all this. Right. In the event of a, a fire outbreak, you need them. In the event of a flood, you need them. So where they need to learn how to swim, you let the Navy do that. Where they need to learn how to fight fire, you let the, uh, uh, the, fire, the service. fire service do that. You probably need to get the, uh, the, the, the Ghana Medical Association to give them some training in first aid uh, administration. Mm -hmm. These are basics. And so if we do not have them as we speak as part of the job qualification mm -hmm. criteria, something is missing why are we not doing it can i get yes it? and so some that needs to change okay doc yes, why yes. are we not doing it well i think why we are not doing it that is a question that unfortunately richard had to answer and you have been in eight years you didn't well, need doc, to it comes so, to both of you you were there eight years you didn't need to answer it yes, richard, we in two me. years we, i have to we i hear we were there i'll take years. the responsibility we were there eight years and you didn't do and it we probably haven't answered it effectively the reason for which they have been given the mandate now so I don't expect that anybody from their side sits in the studio and say, we shouldn't be doing this. As we speak, mm. our security services are being heavily politicized. We know of an alleged over 600 party activists that have been pushed into the BNI. We know that a lot of the vigilante boys and girls have been pushed into the police, mm. into the secu security services across board. We saw what happened at Ayawaso mm. and the role played by some of their vigilante boys. We know that after they had been given power in January 2017, a lot of people who were working in the public service without even any party uh, association whatsoever, but by mere virtue of their names, were basically moved out or sacked or dismissed, mm. and new people were brought in the, based on party the, affiliations. These figures of 600 and all, where did you learn it from? Well, I'm curious to know. Well, I will get to that. No, so, I, I will no, 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 let you know. I will let you know. These things, I don't know whether you are not reading them. We read them everywhere. Where? They are all over on, on social media as Just well. Just cite your source. Okay. Uh, social Richard, media Richard, is not a very Richard, good source. Richard, allow me, allow me to now, do my job, now, please. Thank you. <laughs> I should cite my source. My source. So, yeah, you are an academic. He, he should Please deny. Oh, he Richard, should deny. Richard, allow okay. no. He is a, a deputy communication officer of the MPP. Right. If he thinks that what I'm saying is not true, he should deny it. But you are the one. The, yes, saying but he so, should deny so it. So show your source. Oh, he should deny. Then, my then source can, is the BNI itself. Okay. My source is the, the BNI. BNI told you. I'm saying that my source is the BNI. Doctor Kwesa White no, is an academic no that problem. I, I yes, respect, Richard, yes. Richard, and he knows the name of the game is. Evidence. So, Richard, I allow you, you, Richard, you make your point. That allow him to source, make his point. I'm asking him is to the, name his source. He says it, BNI. My source yeah. is the BNI itself. Go and find is out. Is it the BNI report? Which I am day, saying which, that which, my which? source is the BNI. Go and ask the BNI <laughs> officials whether they have not been virtually coerced into recruiting over 600 party boys okay. and girls. Okay. And we are talking about sources oh here. God. We are talking about sources, right. right? That's great. Citing sources. As we speak now, one thing that we should know as a nation is that when the president speaks or the vice president speaks, must be authoritative, authoritative. authoritative information or data that can be cited in research documents. We have the president and the vice president lying and flip-flopping on a large number of issues in this country. Lying about what? Oh, come hmm. on. Um, even we will be coming to national health insurance. Yes, we'll right? talk about that. He, 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 the I president, think they are letting him get away. The no, president, no, no. the president, uh, we are on talked a very about. Good note, but now we will continue on the good note. Richard, oh, don't worry please. about that. The, the the president talk about debt they inherited from. No, but that's the, not what the, we're talking. No, about. but I'm, I'm giving you one example no, of where he we're lied. We're talking about Friday. We'll come to source, talk about. Source. Now you you are alleging that. Over 600 people have been pushed into BNI, yes. some more into immigration, yes. some more into police, fire yes. services. And yes. you say all the facts, the, all what you have said. I am saying that. It was sourced from the BNI. But look, my, my friend, you are a journalist, aren't you? BNI yeah. report. No, no, wait. I you can are, say you anything are, I ask him to listen, go verify. You are, you are a journalist, aren't you? Yes, I am. Very good. So I come into your studio and I give you leads. Follow the leads <laughs> and tell the nation. <laughs> I'm not supposed to do your job for you, just like how you've asked me to not to do not to, to allow you to do your job. <laughs> I'm giving you leads. So yours is to go into town. Wow. Find out all these things. Mm. And when they are not true, 
Then you come back and what, say. What did you say to me on a wild goose chase? How could you come to the conclusion that it's a wild goose chase no. when you have not even made the attempt? If that is the case, <laughs> so, then everything else could be a wild goose so chase. So the BNI report you are making reference to. I'm not saying to. BNI report. I said okay. my source is the BNI. <laughs> so go and talk to so the when individuals did you in the BNI. This information. I'm not <laughs> that, is in, that, is not, that is immaterial. Really? Yes, it's immaterial. Wow. When okay. is it's immaterial? But I am saying that between when the MPP look, go to Asutari, Asutari, okay. the, the, the military camp over there. Over 5,000 uh, I mean, vigilante boys have been sent there for training. Jesus okay. Christ. And it was admitted, in fact, it was acknowledged and validated by the young man who appeared at the, at the email short commission. Mm -hmm. So why are we trying to make it look like these things are manufactured? My question now is do we need to depoliticize that? Absolutely. Uh, and, and when should we start doing that? We should start it now. We should start it now because. All those individuals who do not qualify, first of all, we must set the qualification criteria. Mm. What requisites, basic qualifications do you have in order to be employed in NADMO? Right. And that must be the basics. Following that, we must pl place adverts and let people who have those qualifications do what? Apply right. and enter. That is the only way we can save lives. But where NADMO has become an appendage mm. of political parties, as and when elections are lost or won, it's like you wipe it clean, you rob the institution of its memory, you get everybody out and bring new people in. You basically are, I mean, playing with the lives of Ghanaians. Okay, let's move on. Yesterday, uh, Dr. White, I'll start with you. Your side of the party, uh, your, your party, I beg your pardon, uh, made some very damaging uh, remarks about the NHS, the fact that it's collapsing, the fact that the president is not being truthful to the nation, the fact that we owe and that uh, we're painting a flowery and rosy picture, and that uh, if we don't take care of the NHS, if not already, uh, will be a thing of the past. Why would you make such statements? Well, thank you very much. I think that um, health is very important for, for um, the survival of our country. All this talk about GDP, economic development, inflation, exchange rate, and they are all important. Mm -hmm. But nothing is more important than health. Okay. And one of the reasons why health is important is that actually the economy resides in the health of the people. Okay. If the people are healthy, they are likely to be better workers, mm -hmm. and the being better workers could potentially lead to higher productivity mm -hmm. and, and so on and so forth. And that creates opportunities and then opens up the economy and then creates opportunities for everybody else. And so when we set up an institution like the National Health Insurance with the view to ensure that it reduces the burden, the financial burden of access to health care, it is important that we manage it well, we insulate it, and ensure that conversations and public comments around it do not even undermine its credibility. Right. And so the press conference was intended to highlight a number of issues that we felt were undermining the very essence and survival of the uh, National Health Insurance Scheme. Okay. The first is that, I mean, like I, I was trying to say earlier on, the President has consistently said that they had inherited debt of about 1.2 billion Ghana cities from, from the NDC administration. But the same, I mean, National Health Insurance report presented to Parliament indicated that that was, the debt was around 425.79 million cities mm as at the end of 2016 when NDC was living power. Okay. So what accounts for the discrepancy in, in, in what the president indicated and what the official report that was submitted to parliament indicated? This raises credibility issues for not only the president, but for the National Health Insurance Scheme itself, and of course for, for the government. Because when the highest man uh, uh, in the government speaks and his facts are uh, more or less contradicted by um, the, the, the individuals working in the institution or the reports that are, are presented to parliament, then we have a reason to be concerned. But more importantly, between when NDC left office and now, we have also observed that the coverage in terms of how many people or percentage of people that the National Health Insurance covers across the country is okay. gradually going down. Right. In 2016, for example, it covered 39% of the population. Mm -hmm. In 2017, 17%. And in 2018, 35 percent so clearly there is something not uh, not being done well mm. and that raises a lot of concerns uh, about whether the national health insurance had stopped okay subscribers from subscribing whether the national health insurance scheme is still actively allowing people to subscribe and what exactly is going on it's it's not uh, very well known now that in itself is also supported by another fact which is 
the amount of money that is released to the scheme okay. year by year basis. Uh, that has been released to the scheme year by year basis since uh, 2016. In 2016, for instance, it was over f it's about 400 and uh, 742 million. That's mm -hmm. 2016. 27, it came down to 600. And then 2017, uh, 2018, it came down to 506 million Ghana cities. These things raise a lot of concern. Then we know also that funds from the scheme have been given to, have been invested in some private entity. Mm -hmm. An attempt by the scheme to retrieve that money has become a problem. Yeah. Now, these things may sound like just money reducing, numbers not covering, but okay. somebody is dying somewhere as a result of the inability mm -hmm. of the scheme to meet Ghanaians at the point of their needs. And that is important because, I know you want to come in, but just yes. let me learn quickly. That is important also because if you recall, before the MPP came to power, they said the NHIS has collapsed. Today, without any new intervention whatsoever in the NHIS, we have been told that the NHIS is back and fully cruising. You say they paid your debt. Yes, but they said it's back and it's fully cruising. They paid our debt. There is nothing like you've paid anybody's debt. Government is, is an institution in perpetuity. You inherit access and liabilities. Don't they inherit Kotoka International Airport? Terminal 3, brand new, don't they inherit Ridge Hospital, don't they inherit, inherit the, the University of Ghana Medical Hospital, mm -hmm. Circle Inter Interchange, Kaswa Interchange, Dodowa Hospital, don't they inherit all these things? They did inherit all of them. So if you inherited the debt, that is the money we took to build those things. Mm -hmm. Now tell us what you are building with the money you are taking. So there is something like this is NDC debt, this is MPP debt. In any case, when the NDC took power in 2008, it also paid debts that were inherited from former President Kufo's time. No complaints. That is just the nature of government itself. So I think that I'll come back to Richard Stein. We must learn to have <laughs> these national discourses right. at, a, at a certain level of maturity and stop making this, this country, MPP this, NDC this, MPP this, MPP this. The fact of the matter is that to move forward, we must first and foremost look at every Ghanaian as a citizen. Mm. Beyond that, it, nothing else matters. Mm. Our constitution allows us to freely belong to political parties of our choice, and that we must always do, because in there lies the difference of ideas that can lead us into development. They, but they, we cannot behave as though we are enemies and we are each other's throat, and if I come, I will undo everything that this person has done. We built uh, Kotoka International Airport. We just saw, uh, what do you call it, uh, a, a cabinet memo that is suggesting that this government wants to privatize, I mean, uh, aspects of, of uh, Kotoka International there Airport. Is a, Where there's a memo like that. Yes, you haven't seen it on social media. Okay, uh, you, so, haven't, you haven't seen so the, the no, cabinet no, memo. The uh, Finder newspaper and uh, Elvis Daco, who is the editor, has written a story. It says the accusations by the NDC that the new Patriotic Party government did not do due diligence before investing 17.5 million uh, with the all time capital investment have turned out to be inaccurate. And the fact that you started uh, the all time deal in 2012. Uh, is, that, is that correct? I think that is questionable. Why so? What is his source? Since you were asking me about sources earlier. Mm. So you see where we are. So due diligence needs to be done on the NHI, story itself. NHI under Sylvester Mensa. I call Sylvester Mensa right now. Tell him to deny this. This 17.1 million. Call Sylvester Mensa. I challenge your, 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 your producers to give him a call. That he doesn't know about this. That it was invested under the NDC. Please but, call him but as a source. But, but I even, beg. But even if it was invested, do us under some the good. NDC. Just call. But even if He's the, denying even it. If the investments started under the NDC, <laughs> we know that under this government, did they start? Confirm for me. Did I don't start? know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Under this government, we do know that 17 million Ghana cities has been invested. Okay. And our attempts to claim that money has resulted in excuses from that institution. We also know that that institution in itself was alleged to have been involved in some of the things that led to the collapse of one of the. Of the of the banks so we are raising a concern that what is the locus of this particular institution okay. in our public financial management in this mm. country okay that makes it have such access okay let, let richard have a bite now richard so in the words of the ndc why are you collapsing nhia don't you know that people will die don't you know that people will suffer why why are you doing this in the words of the ndc jesus christ <laughs> My brother, you know something? No. When did NHI start? To bail you out? No. Who, no, who, bro who I, brought, I, who I brought, don't answer questions. Who, who brought NHI? I don't answer questions, so yes. you're not bailing me out. Who brought NHI? 
What was the debate surrounding NHI when President Kufo brought about it? Okay. You mean who brought NHI? Can I answer him? And then. No, no, can I, can oh, I answer you, him? I think no, you've, no, had no, your, you've, you've had your. You, you've had, you had, you've had, you've had, when when, okay, when the program was about implemented, about all you said was that you started the pilot. Mm. The, the, please, let's get on with it. <laughs> NHIA, in its current shape and form, Mm. was started by the NPP government under President Kufo. Any time we have now is different from what Kufo... Uh, when, when we went into elections, if I remember, Dr. Kumbo said that when you come mm. back, you're going to have a what one-time premium payment. Okay. Yes? Is it in your manifesto or not? Mm. When you came to government, you realized that we collapsed it in, so you had to go with what we have. You know what? Uh, it looks like sometimes the media is not able to read the, let me put it in quotes, the chaskele the NDC tries to play with that. As a the 17.5, they talk oh, about that. As for that bit, it's established. It is, and we'll, I will come to that. You see, um, they are in a quagmire right now. Mm. And that has to do with this whole, uh, vigilantism thing and then the role of their chairman in it. The role and of our chairman? Your national chairman. In what vigilantism? He, he's in court. I don't want us to... Oh, to, that is where I'm heading. I'm not getting... And, no, and, please. And it that. doesn't mean the matter cannot be described. Mm. I know what I am saying. If he wants, he can cite me. Point is this. Well, those are your words. Not Point ours. is this, yes. There is a tape where he's made all those things, those comments on, okay? When the issue is being discussed at the national level, what do we get? Uh, he quickly writes a, a letter to the president, oh, I want us to solve this vigilante thing, and I want it done this way, and gives his conditions. The president has already said he wants that thing resolved, whether you like it or not, and he will do it by law. Let's talk NHIS. No, I, I'm coming to NHIS. You don't have all the time. That's I am why. telling you it is directly linked to NHIS. So you, you, you say, know what? You say that is a... The man is due is his bill. He's billed to appear in court. Right, today. Yes. So what do they do? They create a rules. You and I are sitting down here discussing that rules. NHI. Is there no genuine point they have raised? Which is the genuine I, I point? Oh, please, they, they, ah, please. They Cape Coast, the Look. Cape Coast Hospital, yes. not so long ago, were actually begging for monies to be paid lest the scene collapses and people lose their lives. Uh -huh. That's uh, a genuine concern, isn't it? Oh, that is a very genuine concern. That is a one-off scenario. Take us four years back and tell me how many hospitals had issues. Every life matters. Yes, every life matters. It's been resolved. Now, he just stated so many untruths here. He says that. The scheme is now under, in terms of uh, 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 underperforming coverage. Go to your NHI uh, uh, reports. In 2016, it covered 8 million, uh, 18 million. Today, as we speak, it's 20.1 million. 18.6 in 2016. Today, it's 20.1 million. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that is a reduction, but probably in the end, this is my it is. Okay. The 17, .1, uh, uh, 17 million that you're talking about right. mm. that was given out. In 2012, you came into an arrangement with that capital uh, 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 whatever institution. And when people were dying, those lives that matter he's talking about mm. were dying, you decided to give NHIA money to a private company who then do their investments and as of today, we are trying to retrieve it, and they are saying that per the contract, there's a year more before we can retrieve the money. And you are here telling us that what? Now on our fault. Where is that from? But it is in their nature. The very person who read this press conference, press mm -hmm. statement, is on record. He doesn't have the credibility. Why he's leading their communications, I don't know. But he has several uh, had to apologize that I wonder why they still want him. Why, why aren't you abrogating, is it, is it, abrogating I mean, the deal you if you find the deal problematic? Why oh, you so you abrogate, you should, uh, if I have to wait another year and get my money back, 
and uh, uh, having to abrogate it and pay judgment debt, uh, which, have, which option will I have? You have several things already, so uh, why, uh, why don't abrogate this so, one? So, no, but you have taken us there for, seven, uh, uh, for some six years. Uh, you you didn't see the need to uh, retrieve the money. I come and there's a year left for me to retrieve it and somehow I should abrogate it because every life matters. It doesn't matter to you. Please. Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time. Thank Doc. You. Doc, thank you very much. Dr. Michael Pesawai, she is a former director of the National Service Scheme. He was here on behalf of the NDC. Richard Yama is also a Deputy Communications Director of the NDP. And this journey, Richard, thank you very much for your time.